this video will look at contra accounts. It might also be helpful looking at the video on normal balances because there's a relationship between contra accounts and normal balances. To look at contra accounts, we will just do it by the use of an example. So let's say that you um, purchase an asset, <coughs> and we'll say it's a chair. The chair is going to last you for five years. So what do we want to do? We've got to account for the use of that chair. So we'll say the chair is going to last for five years. It's cost $100, therefore we'll use the chair up at $20 per year. So later on we'll talk about depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. Well, the, uh, the $20 per year is an example of depreciation. So let's look at the end of the first year. We record the asset chair at its cost um, based on the historic cost principle. So it will be um, chair at cost $100, but we must also reflect that we've used up $20 of the chair. And this is where the concept of the contra account becomes valuable. So let's look at what we would show in our books. We would have something like chair at cost $100 less Accumulated depreciation, $20, and that would be a credit balance. And then the carrying amount will be $80. So this gives us some important information. That it tells us that we're carrying the chair at a value of $80. And we could have done that just by um, deducting, info, you know, deducting the cost De 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 deducting the usage from the cost and that would tell us that the carrying amount is $80. However, by using the concept of a contra account we get extra information. The contra account tells us that the chair still remains at a cost of $100 but we've used up $20 of it. So that tells us more about that $80. The accumulated depreciation is a contra account to the, account, to the asset account of chair. So what, what about contra accounts? Contra accounts provide more information about the parent account. Well in this case by using the contra account we're able to tell that even though the carrying amount was only $80, we'd used up $20 of it already and that the original cost was $100. The contra account always has the opposite normal balance to its parent account. So if we go back to the previous page we see the normal balance of an asset is a debit the normal balance of accumulated depreciation is a credit because it's a contra account to the asset. Um, so, uh, well, I just said there, a contra account to an asset will always have a normal balance of a credit. So, examples of contra accounts include accumulated depreciation, which we've just looked at. So, it's a contra account to an asset. Um, discount allowed is a contra account to a revenue account. So a revenue account would is normal balance as a credit. So discount allowed will have a normal balance of a debit because it's the contra account to the revenue account. Allowance for bad debts um, is a contra account to accounts receivable. So accounts receivable is the money that people owe to us because of credit sales were made. But later we will look at about how you might make an allowance for the fact that not all of those people may pay you. And that's the allowance for bad debt. So it is a credit account to the debit account of accounts receivable, which is an asset. On a similar vein, which and these two are partners, allowance for bad debts and bad debt expense. Um, but bad debt expense is a debit expense, is a debit normal balance, because it's a contra account to a revenue account. So in summary, uh, contra accounts provide more information about the parent accounts and contra, contra accounts always have the opposite balances to parent accounts. Uh, I will set up some quizzes so you get some practice at doing this and it will be important to get that practice so that you cement the concept of a contra account.